So creating this Tumblr account gives you access to the whole Tumblr ecosystem. And the big, uh, the big difference with uh, a Tumblr blog and WordPress, again, is the kind of content being, being shared. So to get a sense of that, you've probably seen a little bit of it already. I've got my Tumblr blog visible here. But also, when I'm back simply on tumblr.com, that's the dashboard, that's the home screen. So what we'll do is, wherever you're at, just to make sure we're all in the same place, let's go over to Tumblr. Let's go back to tumblr.com. This will take you back to your, to your, main, uh, your main account, tumblr.com. And then we can get a sense of the anatomy of what we have here uh, at the top left. We can always go back home with the Tumblr logo, which apparently will animate in different psychedelic ways if you look at it enough. Uh, then you've got search. We'll look at search extensively in a little bit. You can always go back home. You can go Tumblr search. And you've got a, a home button dashboard that's the same basically as going back to the, the Tumblr logo. Then we've got Explore. We'll take a quick look at that. If you click Explore, lots of people use Tumblr. There's hundreds of millions of blogs here. Uh, everyone's sharing stuff. And here is a place to look at it to, to get ideas uh, about what, what to share and how you share. So just quickly browsing here, I see pictures, animations. I don't see a lot of... Um, I don't see a lot of text. Um, you might see a quote, but then there are links over to other things. Now, this is the explore where like everything about everything is shown here, which might not be relevant to your own particular endeavors. That's why on your home screen, that's where it'll show you the posts of the accounts that you followed. So here, in theory, it should then be showing you what you what really matters to to you under home. But under explore, it could be very random things that don't quite matter to your business, but um, that could give you inspiration. Uh, you've got the inbox. In my case, I've got three items in my inbox. I asked you to, to put in a, an answer to that question, so I've got some answers here. If you don't have anything there, that's fine, but I'll take a quick look at my inbox where you guys wrote, so right here, anonymous said, salt pie, which I think would kill you if you ate it. Uh, Dinosaur Science News said coconut cake and also peanut butter brownies. So I'm getting people re replying to me, and here I can then block it, report it, delete it, and I can reply. So those questions that, that have been answered to me, I mean those questions that have been asked to me, because I've got, what's your favorite baked good? That That's my ask. It's like a contact form, sort of. Ask. And I ask these questions, and then I got some answers. So I could reply, answer privately, make it public, etc. If people had gone over to the submit your, submit your recipe, I believe it shows up there as well. The next item is messaging. So if I, um, if I choose to, to have a conversation with uh, other people on on Tumblr, I can do that. The next one is activity. So here it just shows me here's things that have happened in Tumblr. Questions answered, posts liked, all of that stuff. And I can go in and see these stats. And then the last icon is your account settings.
So that's the general anatomy of what these different icons are at the top. I will click back on the home screen. Now we'll get a little practice on, on sharing content. So we'll be able to post, which you can of course edit or delete. So if I go back at, at the top, I've got these different kinds of posts. So I can go, for example, I'll start off with the text post. If you click that, you get this editor, the rich editor, and you'll also get, because this is relatively new, it's telling you here, if you want to style your text, select it, and then you'll get various features. So we'll see how that works. But from this screen, we can share to my current blog, or if I have more than one, I can quickly switch between blogs here. We'll look at these options a little later. Title, text, tags, and post. So this looks very familiar, like we were going to share to, to WordPress. So we've got a, a space for a title. So I'll say recipe of the month of the week. And then the actual text. So I can start writing text. Do you notice that when you have an when you have a brand new line, you have this add to the line. If you've already typed something, that doesn't appear. You have to have an empty line and then you can add, you can attach. I can attach a photo, video, gif, divider, or read more. So this also has like a read more feature. I can write 500 words, and you'll see all those 500 words. People will see all those 500 words and uh, that might be too much. You might want to show a little preview of something and then read more. I have insert GIF. This is the thing about the um, the thing about Tumblr that it has uh, a lot of a character of being very visually interesting via animation. So under animation, if I search a keyword, Hopefully this is stuff is safe for work. Um, I'm searching cake. And so I have all of these animations regarding cake. How do you get the eggs? Like How do you get what? The eggs. Well, like I, like I said, you need to have an empty line, and then you're going to have to add it. If you're on a line that already has text, it won't let you. You need to press enter to add an empty line and then you can add you can add something. So here I've attached a picture which I can then remove. Or I can add if I've got my own video. I have to put in an address of a video that exists. So if I've uploaded my video to YouTube, for example, or on my website, I need that video somewhere first. Then I add its address. A picture, I can upload my own picture. I can upload multiple pictures. So let's say I'm writing, I'll add some multimedia in a moment, but let's say I'm writing a little text here. So I'm saying recipe of the week, our pecan pie recipe is classic and modern at the same time. And what I can do is select the word classic, for example, and I get this formatting. So 
So I can make that bold, I mean like italics and make that italics. I can start to write ingredients. So ingredients, and I can set that to bold. I can also indent that. This arrow here that, that's block quote. Add a divider. I can do numbered lists, bullet lists. So very, very, very similar to WordPress, isn't it? I can do the same thing that I do at WordPress. I can do it here. Well, what if I already have WordPress, but I also want to get in on, uh, on Tumblr? So what I could do is, let's say I'm going to start to write something. Recipe of the week. I, I could add one of these pictures. Let's say I'm going to add a picture. And then I'm going to add text and, and say our check out our new recipe. We can't get only one piece. What I'm going to do here is I can make check out our new recipe. I can select it and make that a link. You have the option there. For links. And notice these also have keyboard shortcuts. So if you quickly want to make something bold, it's control B. A link is control K. So if I select that as a link, it'll say, What's your link? So then I'll point that over to my victorsbakery.wordpress link. So what I'm using, what I'm doing here with Tumblr is, I'm using it to catch attention maybe with a little animation. And then I'm writing something about it, and that's an active link. And that will take them back to my, my WordPress. So I'll mention tags in a moment, but let's say I click post. I'm going to share something. All my, all my zero followers could see this. And people searching on Tumblr could see this. I'll add a text again because because we've also got tags down here, hashtags, keywords. Let's say I do another one, recipe of the week. This is uh, key lime pie. And perhaps to get found by more people, I start to think about hashtags. So hashtag pie. And as I'm starting to to, to type, it might suggest, okay, do you mean the, the keyword pie, piercing, etc.? What about key, lime, pie? You can, this is one of the very few places where you can put spaces in your hashtags on Tumblr. You can't put spaces on hashtags on Twitter. But here I'm typing key lime, and it suggests key lime pie, so I'll go for that. And technically, I could do key lime pie without spaces. Recipe. Uh, 
I'll say uh, Tumblr uses hashtags, which can have spaces. Take advantage of them. Add three to five hashtags on your posts to increase visibility. So if these are the keywords that make up your post, and you're thinking in terms about what people are, are searching for, they could find your posts. So I can post that. If I look at photo, it's going to focus on adding a photo, so either from the web if I have an address, or a photo that I upload. I can add multiple ones. I can have a caption on each, po on each photo. Notice at the bottom left of a photo, I have the dots. So that will have some text. Even though I'm sharing a photo post, I can mix and match. I can also add to that text. So add a caption. It says add a caption if you like. So I can start to add text. I can style that text. Technically, I can even add more content to it. So I can add a picture to the picture. I can add an animation to the picture. I can add a video, etc. Add hashtag. So again, if you're new to Tumblr, it's going to, I think, pretty annoyingly pop up every once in a while to tell you, check out this feature, check out this screen, don't forget to do this, don't forget to do that. Just bear with it, and eventually it'll stop uh, telling you about that. But at the moment, it's uh, popping up every moment for me. Quote is going to be something that focuses on writing some text, and again, you can... You can write a lot, and oh, I see mine's going off the page. Interesting. What's that? Oh yes, oh yes, spaces. Oh yeah. Okay, so that's how you break Tumblr. You forget to add spaces. So you can add, you can add a um, quotes. That one's pretty limited because it's focused on the actual text and the source. There isn't the extra styling that you can do there. Chat is one I I haven't used very much. I don't have much to say about it. But under chat, uh, I guess you put a back and forth chat yourself here. So you have to put together some sort of chat. Audio. So this is search for a song 
or paste the URL. Or you can upload your own song. There's an icon here on the right side to add your own, your own music. So if you've got an address, so let's say uh, This is going to link over with um, Spotify. And so here I've attached a, a song uh, that I searched for. And this could be something interesting in addition to what you normally add to it. It can then have a description or the other types of texts and tags. So I'm just kind of randomly choosing all of these items. The point of this is to is to figure out what um, what you're going to use Tumblr for. How you're going to use Tumblr, you can. Um, you can share a variety of types of, of posts. What if trading were as simple as yes or no? It is. So here I'm adding a YouTube video. It made the thumbnail for me. It makes it an active link, and I can further um, add more text. And I've been skipping it, but I would be taking the time to add tags here, three to five tags on all of my posts, because people are going to be searching for things. So if you're adding good descriptions and good tags, people in theory then could find your content. This looks like it's only previews of music they uh, want you then to buy. So I'm going to go back to text, and let's say I'm going to be sharing something. I've been simply clicking post, and it shares it at that moment. If you look at the triangle next to it, this is where we have add to queue. So if I select add to queue, it'll say this will be queued. So I'm adding that, I'm adding something else. So I'm queuing things. I'm putting, I'm feeding the queue, and this will automatically share for me. The queue is found here. Up on you, the settings, or your account. Now that I'm, now that I'm in this particular screen, uh, my items here, I've got settings and so forth, but I've got then, these are the number of posts you've made, the number of followers you have, I'm, I'm popular already, one follower. The activity that you're getting, what you've added to the queue. So that's found under your, your icon up here now. So I can look at my queue and see what's, what's going to be shared, and it tells me, Thursday. 2 p.m., this will be shared, then Friday, then Saturday. I can rearrange these. I can say 
move this to the top. I want this to be the latest thing that will be shared now. Or I want this one to be the next thing. Or post it right now. Other settings as well. So I have that ability um, to to add to the queue. I've also got save draft, so let's say I'm writing something very, very important, and then I need to get back to it, so I can save that as a draft. I get saved, and then now, under my account here, I have then, okay, You've got something in a draft. So that's in the draft. Post it now. Continue to edit it. Delete it. Have post privately. I haven't used this one very much, so I'm not sure about the f all the nuances. But most likely, you post this, and no one can see it unless you share the address. And then we've got something a little different than the queue. The queue, to some degree, is random in that you add content to it, and depending how you set it, mine is going to post something between 1 and 3 every day. If I widen the time, then it'll, it can randomly post on different times throughout those days. That's the queue. But I can schedule posts as well. So I'm going to say, I'm going to share this and I'm going to set that to schedule. So now what will happen is I can actually sort of put like a time and date about when I want this to be sent exactly because the queue is going to be a bit random to some degree. So here I can say, um, notice it can say something like next Tuesday 10 a.m. So I'm going to say, uh, I think I can say this as also Let's say 2016, 05, 26, 1, 25 p.m. So I'm going to schedule this at another point. So now that's been set up to, to go at a different time. I've specifically said via the <clears throat> via the, uh, the the schedule method. This still puts it into my queue screen. The queue screen will just show you everything that's going to be sent off. But I had set this May twenty sixth, one twenty five p.m. And that's what it's showing here. I have specifically noticed it's also marked. It's also marked differently. These have been queued. These are automatic. This one has been set. That's when that's going to go. So anything that I've scheduled will be found there under the, again, under the queue. So those are the different ways, the different things that you can share, the different ways that you can share.
of other things to look at, of course, but any questions so far? So, uh, well, here's a quick way to edit your queue as well. The queue lets you stagger posts over a period of hours or days. It's an easy way to keep your blog active and consistent. Now one more thing to look at. Let's say I'm sharing something. I'm going to again go back to text for example, but I'm going to I'm going to share something. Um, if we look at this option on the top right corner, it uh, it gives me various things that I could set. Custom URL. Everything that I share to Tumblr will have an address. So if I if I look at all my posts, all of your posts have an address. You don't it's not obvious at all until you roll your mouse over over your post. Do you see what I'm, what I'm getting at? If you roll over any of your posts, the corner gets dog-eared. The corner of the, of the post gets dog-eared. And if you click that, again, it's not obvious until you go to the corner of your post. But you click on that dog-ear, and that shows you, well, there's your, there's your post and its address. So this post in the whole ecosystem of Tumblr is defined by that link. If I want to, when I'm posting, up on the settings here, I can add a custom address. Now it's not as good as you would think because it's still going to put in s some things that it wants. It will put in, it will put in like a unique address, a unique ID of the post still, some numbers. But after that, then you can add your own. So let's say I'm going to write here recipe, and I have to do this like an, a web address, so no spaces. Recipe pecan cookies. So this post will have the existent address plus this. So if you'd like to do that, that that's an extra thing to do. You can add a post date. This is not really like that scheduling. This is just to sort of like attach a date to it. Do I want to use the rich editor? And then this is pretty useful here, content source. This is a cool way for you to embed a link to your posts. Let's say I'm writing this recipe, and at the top I want it to link to a specific address. So just randomly doing an address here. Whatever I write and post, this has been posted, and it'll say source. And where did it come from? So everyone will see that, and that'll go back to the original address. So you see that trick for these things that you're sharing you can go there and add a content source. I highly recommend you do that. I'll put it in my notes here. On your posts, go to Options, Content Source. This will attach a permanent link to whatever you choose. If you add your, uh, your link to the description of what you wrote, perhaps that can be changed. Your description can be changed to what someone else wants. But if you add it this way, if someone shares your content to other people, then other people will, uh, uh, will get the original content source in it and it won't be changeable. This is a great thing with, with Tumblr. Give yourself some credit for your content, and that credit will follow your, uh, your posts.
So let's say I'm using the quote. I can simply put in my web address or I can put in a link directly to a specific landing page. And let's say I added content source and I'll say uh, social media makes the world makes the world go round. Victor. I'll post that. People might see that then on on Tumblr. Well, I should have added tags. But then if it goes around through Tumblr, people people see that, then it'll say source. And that and that source there will will link them back to will be an active link that goes back to my website. So that's something that's optional, but that is uh, is recommended. And those are the little nuances of posting your content on on Tumblr. We're going to shift gears in just a moment to um, to talk about uh, getting views and such in just a moment, but questions here. Yes? Maybe I missed it, but do you tag your posts with a category? The category would be the hashtag, the topic. So that's how you would organize to get found. I would do it here via the tags. Think of those as categories. So there aren't specifically categories and tags like on WordPress. So they don't match what you said on the home page. No, that's a little bit different because they sort of do these curated categories. Um, so they put together these various topics because there's no way here really, there's no category. It's They curate it in some way to put together these, these ideas t together into a category. <laughs> 